As the industrial environment we live in becomes more information and data rich, it makes sense that simple things like I.O. addressing becomes more complex. In this video, let's explore the concept of aliases in EcoStructure Control Expert as one way of simplifying our programming. In the beginning, there were I.O. addresses. These could have a topological form, identifying each point by its physical location, or a logical form, linking each point to an entry in an I.O. table with numeric addresses. Programs were written and logic was solved directly referencing these addresses. In some cases, it was possible to link a symbol or tag name to an address, so we humans could more easily understand the logic, but the controller didn't care. Later on, the logic engines and controllers evolved. Most important to them was a symbol or variable name. Logic was solved using these variables as logic elements instead of addresses as was originally done. I.O., however, was still referenced in hardware by a topological or logical address. In order to use I.O. and logic, variable names could be linked to those addresses. In modern controllers, particularly the Modicon M580, object-oriented programming is the rule rather than the exception. Every element in the controller is referenced to a variable, right down to the I.O. module level, so there is no longer a topological or logical address table to worry about. Yes, there are exceptions to this, such as the ability to address a local I.O. module topologically, or mapping variables to state RAM addresses for classic Modbus communications, but the majority of applications now are entirely data variable driven. The data structure used for referencing I.O. modules and channels is the Device Derived Data Type, or Device DDT. This structure contains all of the information available to the project regarding an I.O. module or individual channel, all wrapped up in a single variable mapped to an I.O. module. In this example, an analog module is assigned a Device DDT variable to represent its and its channel data. The current process value is several levels down in the structure. The final variable rep representing the input value is made up of the descending elements of the device DDT structure using dot notation. There are pros and cons to this approach. On the pro side, a single variable for each module makes it easy to treat that module as an object in the system. This variable is easily accessed by modern communication drivers like OPC. More importantly, we have eliminated the dependency on Modbus as a protocol with its inherent limitations. On the other hand, a device DDT mapped to a module is locked, meaning comments can't be added, and I.O. references are generic with no hint of their actual functionality. Structured variables can be complex, leading to a long and complicated variable string to reference a single I.O. channel as we saw on the previous slide. A simple answer to this dilemma is the use of aliases. An alias, just like in real life, is an alternate name. In EcoStructure Control Expert, they are used to simplify access to elements of data structures like I.O. channel data in a device DDT. From the time an alias is created, any reference to the original data structure element is not necessary. While the structure and contents of a device DDT are locked, an alias can be commented, allowing full documentation of each element it represents. Let's look at an example. Let's start by opening the M580 demo project that installs with EcoStructure Control Expert. I've added some I.O. modules to a remote I.O. drop to demonstrate aliasing concepts. The first module we'll look at is this DAI module in slot 1. By opening that module, we can see all 16 of the symbols associated with those channels, and each one is based on the uh, device DDT variable associated with this, and is fairly complex. If I go to the module part number and then to the device DDT tab, I can see the actual device DDT variable name here. So it has a lot of information. It tells us the, uh, that this lives on the EIO bus. It is drop one, rack zero, slot one, and it's a DAI1604 module. The go to details button will take us to the data editor and highlight that device DDT variable. By expanding this, we can see that there are a couple of elements for the module, the module health and a module fault code, 
And then there's an, an array of discrete input channel uh, variables. And those can be, each array element is consists of a couple of variables. So the first is channel health, and then the value, the actual process variable, or uh, present value of that uh, discrete input channel. And so this is the, the, the end result that we're trying to get to. So the dot notation takes us down through this and gives us a complete variable name starting from the device DDT root down to the value for an individual channel. That's fairly complex, but it's not too bad, but yeah. Let's go to an analog module and take a look at it. It's actually a little more complex. There's a lot more information associated with analog modules to get to that present value variable. So creating a, uh, an alias is easy. So let's go back to this DAI1604. Let's open up our first channel here to the value. There's an alias column here. This alias column is where we would put an alias variable. We just type in the variable name that we want to represent this uh, device DDT variable name. Instead of doing that though, I'm going to open up a spreadsheet. So this is fairly common. You have an engineering uh, document or engineering spreadsheet that highlights every uh, element in your application and all the information there is to know about it. In this case, I don't have every possible piece of information about this, just really what we're concerned with. So our DIO uh, module, DI module, I should say, on drop one, rack zero, channel one, uh, represents these channels seven through 14, okay? So I'm going to take and create an alias for channel seven here. So I will just highlight this, right click and copy it, come back to Control Expert, go to channel seven to the value, and let's right click and paste in the alias column. It doesn't exist, create it, yes. We do want to do that. Now we see that there's a, a discrete input value comment here. I can't change this comment, it's, it's locked. And that's what the little lock symbol shows us. Uh, so this really doesn't tell us other than the alias name anything about the function of this channel. But if you look down here at the bottom, this alias variable was created as an elementary data type variable, as an evil. And the alias of column tells us that its root is it's, it's linked to our device DDT variable for this channel. And this funky little icon uh, to the left of it shows us that this actually is an alias, not just a, an elementary variable in the database. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go back to our engineering document and go over to the, the comment on it. Let's grab this comment, copy that, come over here and paste it in the comment column or our alias. And now we fully commented and documented uh, this IO channel. So how do we confirm that these two actually represent the same thing? I have a section of logic that we'll use to demonstrate that. First, we need to connect to our simulator, which has the program running in it. Then I need to build the changes that we've made. Actually, I could have waited for this, but uh, now we're equal. And let's do two things. Let's put the alias variable here, not inside a structure. It's an elementary variable and is represented with our alias symbol. And we'll put the root of that here. So that is inside of a structure that is at the DAI1604, channel seven, and the value. So now if I do a build changes again and move that change in, let's play with this a little bit and see if they're exactly the same thing or not. If this were a real I.O. point, I couldn't set it. I would have to um, uh, have to force it. So let's do that. I'm going to come down here and force this on. And we see immediately that the alias has the same forcing on it. If I go to the alias, right click and force it off, we see that the root variable also takes on that force state. And from either one of these, I can force it on, force it off, or unforce it as well. 
So now you see that it is possible to greatly simplify the naming of your I.O. channels and make them meaningful to boot. In Aliases Part 2, I'll show you how to use a variable export file in a spreadsheet to bulk create your aliases. Thanks for watching.